Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is the third episode in my Bookish Favourites Advent Calendar series. And today I want to talk about The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Now this book was published in 1989 and it won the Man Booker Prize in the same year. It is a historical novel, even though I don't he often hear it described as such, but it is a historical novel set in 1956 in England and the story follows a butler named Stevens over seven days as he drives from the manor house in which he works to the west country of England. And on this car journey he reflects on his life at Darlington, which is the manor house that he's working at. Uh, he reflects on the owners of the house, past and present, on his life as a butler, his duties as a butler, and his relationships with other people, including his employers, his father, and uh, other butlers, and also the old housekeeper called Miss Kenton. This is a first-person narration, and in my opinion, it's one of the best examples perfectly executed example of the unreliable narrator. Because as Stevens drives through the countryside, he muses on topics such as dignity and the importance and value of dignity, the importance of manners and social conventions, and, and also about the way we remember the past. Now Stevens is a very proud butler and in his pride, he often glorifies the less glamorous aspects of his job and of the people he served, including uh, aristocracy and politicians during the Second World War. So you basically spend the entire book inside of the head of this one aging butler, and there isn't a real plot other than his drive from the manor house to Cornwall. But I did not mind that one bit because this is one of the most fascinating book characters I've ever read and I very rarely say that about middle-aged white men but the way that his thoughts take you on a journey as he himself goes on this journey is just so perfectly executed that I personally did not mind the lack of apparent plot. However, if you are someone who prefers a faster pace and prefers a bit more action in your stories, then this might not be the book for you. The book is perfectly subtle in its emotionality. There is a lot of humour in it, but it is of the understated British dry kind of humour, which mostly consists of Stevens misunderstanding things. For example, his new employer at, uh, at Darlington is an American and there is a little bit of culture clash going on, a bit of miscommunication. Uh, so a lot of the humour comes from Stephen's musing on other people, the way that he misunderstands other people and uh, the way that his treatment of other people makes them misunderstand him. So it's it's a very British type of, of humour, it's a very British type of wit, but it was definitely to my taste. But really underlying the story is a sense of passion and a sense of sadness, which is always present in the story and it's always just below the surface, just simmering there. And in, in a few, in one or two parts of the book, it just breaks out. And when it hits you, it really hits you. I cried while I was reading this book, especially near the ending. And again, I should mention that nothing, nothing enormous happens in the actual plot of the novel. The enormity comes from this very subtle but deep emotionality that Kazuo Ishiguro manages to weave into his story perfectly. It is exactly that subtleness, but at the same time, the very overwhelming sense of sadness that made this book so impactful to me. And it is one of my favourite ever 20th century reads. If this sounds appealing to you, very slow moving plot, plot very in-depth character study, very much being trapped inside the mind of a single person, then definitely give this one a go and you will not be disappointed. If, however, you do prefer a slightly faster paced book with a bit more action and maybe with a larger cast of characters, then this might not be your book. But I found it incredibly touching. 
and just very masterfully and beautifully crafted. As always, let me know your opinions of uh, the remains of the day. Tell me if you liked it, if you didn't like it, what you liked about it and what you didn't like about it. And if you want to catch up on the rest of the uh, Bookish Favourites advent calendar, I say the rest, this is only the third day, then check out the description box where I'll put the link to the entire playlist. See you tomorrow and thank you for watching. Bye!